Hello, all you lovely folks out there, and welcome to episode 212 of the Laravel News Podcast. My name is Jake Bennett, and of course, with me, as always, is my wonderful, amazing co-host, my co-host, the co-host, Mr. Michael Dorinda. How's it going, Michael? Hello, hello. I'm going all right. You're looking quite dapper over there, my friend. You have got a serious studio set up now. You've got a soft box. You've got all the lights. You cleaned up the office. You've got all the things here. Okay. And it's been a super cool journey to see all the pieces and parts come together. We see in our Telegram chat, like, oh, the stuff's coming in. And then the next day we see, here it is. Oh, Michael looks That's awesome. Right. So it's cool. Yes. It's cool. So if you're not watching this on YouTube, you should go give it a look. Go look. Michael's, Michael's put some serious effort in it. It looks, <laughs> it looks nice. It's, I'm still uh, sitting yeah. in my kitchen. <laughs> in the kitchen, yeah. I uh, Well, this was, we had this yeah. conversation the other day where your your problem is not, being able to get your hands on the equipment. Your problem is having a space <laughs> where you can set that equipment That's up. That's correct. And I yes, said you need to yes. hunger game as one of your children. Uh-huh. Just uh-huh. One of and the- then I quoted Jim Gaff again. Yeah, and I quoted Jim Gaff where he said, like, you know, set my kids down and had a conversation said, you know, I, we love all you, but I'm going to have to give up one of you for adoption mm-hmm. because I need a space need for a my high casting right. stuff. And so, yep, yep, so... Oh, oh boy. It is what it is, though. It's okay. It's okay. The audio works out pretty well. Audio I mean, is it's fine. actually video, surprisingly not as... Yeah. Your not video as, and yeah. like you're using yeah. your your iPhone camera, which like... Cause when, I am. When it we works re- out pretty good. When we record, it gets compressed. So I've always gone, mm, yeah, yeah, not that great. But last last North Meets South, I took the, the raw video out of the, the platform oh, that we're using. Smart. And so it actually looks good. So we don't... Don't worry about it too much. So doing, I'm I'm not committing to doing video just yet. I know that Eric is doing a lot more video for the Laravel news as a whole, and I've been dabbling a bit, and I've got all the kit set up now, so things look nice. And so I'm not committed to doing video, but I'm committed to the idea of doing video. So you're getting there. It's it's looking it's, it's getting closer it's every forming. every episode. Yeah. So yeah. So it is. we, it is. we there, there will be a video version of this this podcast uh, that that mm-hmm. we'll put out, whether it's cut up or whether it's just what comes straight out of here. I don't know, but uh, yeah, yep. there, there is a video. Both version should be of- good. Indeed, indeed. And I forget to mention the uh, the date at the top of the show here. So today is Mar not March twenty sixth. It is April 9th. Michael almost got me again. He tricks me like that. You know, sometimes I get the double update. So we have on the uh, episode notes here, it you, is actually April 9th. You yeah, created sorry. That. Well, I You hey, said it was ready to you, go. Well, it did. I said the page is ready to go. It's true. I did. It's my fault. It's my fault. Importantly. Hey, um, something importantly, that happened. At, go ahead. I was going to say, importantly, yes. we are sponsored once again this week, as we will all year long, by our friends at Sentry, the performance error monitoring platform that you use that i use a lot and have mm-hmm. used for a long time and they have been long time members of the laravel community so stick around we will talk more about them a little bit later in the show we will indeed and before we jump into the show i wanted to mention real quick yesterday was a big eclipse day mm-hmm. here in the u.s we had um the uh, total eclipse thing i wasn't in the path of the total eclipse but i did get to right. see part of it and yep. it was it was cool i mean i would have had to drive a while to kind of get down to see it maybe it would have been worth it i don't think i've ever seen a total eclipse in my entire life ever it would have been probably worth it it's not going to happen again for like 20 more years mm. uh jason mccurry however was like 30 miles away from the totality of it yeah and so he drove and went and did it and he said it was totally worth it so nice. my brother also got some really cool pictures so it was kind of neat so um yeah hopefully cool. some of you were able to enjoy that it was a pretty cool pretty cool deal so Anyway, shall we jump into it? We've got releases, news packages, and more, just like the podcast intro says. So let's jump into our releases. Here we go. Laravel 11 non-backed enums in database queries and a with schedule bootstrap method in a Laravel 11.1. So we've got a dot release now. Laravel 11 has been something we've been talking about, the new hotness, and we are now on a dot one release. So this week, they released the 11.1 with a with schedule bootstrap method. As I said before, um, the non-backed enums and query builder SES, which stands for simple email service list management options, which I'm very interested to hear about mm-hmm. actually, and more. So this is the first minor version released since the general availability release of Laravel 11 released earlier this month. Let's get into it. Nuno Maduro contributed a with schedule method 
to the bootstrap slash app.php file. Okay, let me explain this real quick. The new way that everything is happening in Laravel 11, if you haven't had a chance to play with it yet, is most of the things that you're going to configure, things that you would have previously configured in the route service provider, things that you would have configured maybe even in the app service provider, although app service provider is sticking around, um, things that you would have configured in your handler.php class, a lot of those things are getting collapsed into this bootstrap slash app.php. And it's fluent. It's like this fluently defined set of configuration options. So there's um, with providers, there's with middleware, there's with routes, there's whatever, you know, the list goes on. But now this one is with schedule. And with schedule, you have a closure, and then you can pass into that closure as the first argument, the only argument, a dollar sign schedule, which gives you access to the scheduler. So inside of that closure, then you can say schedule, arrow, command. And this is just like what you would have done previously in your console kernel. You can now list all of your scheduled jobs right there in your app.php. The other option that you have too is in your console.php file, which is under your routes, routes slash console.php. That has now been uh, converted sort of to allow you to take any of the things that you have defined in that console.php and you can actually chain on the, uh, the methods to those as well. Those commands that you have there, you can do daily, hourly, minute, whatever. And the new Laravel slash Laravel, um, if you pull in a brand new one, you'll see in console.php after the artisan inspire command, there's an arrow hourly. And so uh, that's just a little hint there to let you know that, by the way, you can do your scheduling in here as well as defining those commands. So now you can do it in your bootstrap slash app.php file. A uh, couple of different places to do that now if you care to do it all right in there. So you have one stop, one spot shop to kind of see those different things. Feel free to do that now with this with schedule fluent method on the bootstrap slash app.php file. Okay, list management. Um, Options added to the SES mail transport. Airful Alam contributed the ability to use SES's subscription management features when you're using SES mail as your driver. You can define the following header in the headers method of a mail message. So there's all these different headers that are specific to emails that are getting sent out. One of those is the X SES list management options, which you can sort of opt into if you're using SES. It is a separate thing. You have to opt into, I believe, on SES. It's not on by default. You have to turn it on. Uh, but this new header automatically enables unsubscribe links in every outgoing email that you specify the contact list and topic of. If the user unsubscribes, then SES does not allow email sending. It will automatically handle the unsubscribe for you, and it will add them to a... Um, like a block list of sorts, right? A suppression list, if you will. Um, this is also really important because Google and Yahoo... Um, created this thing, Yahoogle, right? Which is their new sender. Um, uh, reputation? Not, it's reputation. It's, yeah, what is it? Their rules, their sender rules, right? So if you're a bulk sender, if you're sending more than 5,000 messages a day, I think it's required that you have these headers. But in addition, what's really nice is on these different platforms, instead of there being a spam button, it actually has an unsubscribe button up there instead. So they don't have to go down to the bottom of the email, click the unsubscribe. They just look right up there. It's a one single click mm -hmm. thing. They click it. It makes a post request to your side, unsubscribes them. And so that's hopefully going to keep down your um, abuse sort of complaint rates as well. It should just be it's a simple unsubscribe. It removes it. And uh, now SES will handle that for you. So very cool that we have that option now uh, straight inside of Laravel. Okay. Uh, Giorgio Balduzzi contributed the ability to use non-backed enums in database queries. Casting eloquent attributes is already possible. However, using non-backed enums with the query builder was not pass uh, was not possible. So, real quickly, um, a a backed enum is one where you define the enum and then you say at the end uh, like colon string. Um, I think yeah. it's colon string, string or, or it as yeah string, string or, or, or or int yeah yeah int right exactly. And so these uh, then you have these different backings for those enums. But uh, if you don't have a backed enum, so if you had an enum status and then you just have two cases, active and archive with no strings backing those up, you couldn't do this before, but now you can. So uh, what you can do now is you can say, if you have a user model, for example, you can set your cast, your status cast to cast to that non-backed enum. Um, and so that'll just work out of the box for you. So you don't have to do this weird um, 
You know, if you don't want, and I'm guessing what it's doing behind the scenes here, Michael, is I'm guessing it's either. I'm wonder how it's. I wonder how it's storing it in the database. Actually, queries automatically cast each non-backed enum case to the name value. Ah, interesting. Which is the bit so on the, the value, left so of the equal sign. It's the bit on the left, exactly. And a lot of times the string on the right is actually the same as the bit on the left, right? You just have to use name instead of value. Yeah. Um, so interesting. That's kind of nice. So it'll automatically cast each non-backed enum case to the name value, the value that you defined that case as. So that's really nice. Cool, cool stuff there. Mm -hmm. Um, conditional trait added to the con added to context. Now, context is something that was released by the uh, the last time we were talking here. But Michael Michael Nabil contributed adding the conditional trait to Laravel's new context facade. So this conditional trait is just something that you can um, uh, chain on, basically, so you can have when or unless on top of any of these new things that are added here. So this allows for conditionally setting context and also defining default values when uh, false or true, depending on the conditionable method of when or unless. So that's now added in there. That's everything for 11.1. Of course, you can see the complete list of new features and updates in the diff on GitHub. And then the release notes uh, in the bottom of this post are directly from the change log. So there you have it. Thanks for writing that one up. Paul Redmond, everyone's favorite human. Perfect. Laravel 11.2 was released with a fluent support helper, a context helper, and improved handling of missing database during a migrate operation. So first up, Philo Hermans contributed a fluid global helper function when working with multidimensional arrays. This wraps over the existing fluent class that has been in the Laravel framework for quite a while. And the helper gives you the ability to create a fluent object instance from a multi-dimensional array. And rather than having to you know, collect that array and then use the methods on the collection, you can reference things directly in a similar way that you would if you've ever used PEST with the expectation API, you can just reference underlying uh, keys as object properties. So instead of doing collect dollar data arrow get and then passing a user as a string, you can use fluent dollar data arrow user as a property on the fluent relation. It also then gives you the ability to use get if you wanted to directly, but there are proxy methods available. So thanks to Philo for that one. Michael Nabil, who contributed the uh, conditionable trait in the previous release, also contributed a convenience context helper function for managing the context facade. Depending on the arguments passed, you can either add to context, get the context object, or retrieve with an optional custom, custom default value. So this is similar to using something like data get, for example, where you can mm -hmm. you know, either give me the whole thing or the config helper, You know, get the whole config object, get a specific config object, or get a specific key. Um, so it works very similarly to that, but specifically for the context facade. And also from Michael Nabil, contributed support for a default value on the context getters. So previously, if you were to use context colon colon get is user, if that was not found in context, it would return null. Whereas now you can pass a second argument, which would be a default sort of fallback value. So thanks to Michael for that one. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Those. So just to, to loop back on these real quick, I, I think that this is sort of a convention around a couple of these different global helpers. Like you have cache and session. They all work this way, where if you pass mm -hmm. an array, it's going to set the value. If you just call the method by itself, it's going to give you that uh, that instance. Uh, passing just a string value will grab it out, or you can pass a second argument, which will be that default. So yeah, familiar to those of us who've been using Laravel for a while, but if not, uh, worth a quick look over this uh, or the documentation. It'll get you up to speed quick. Yeah. Uh, Gunther de Brauer contributed a new assert has chain and an assert doesn't have chain method for testing your Laravel jobs. So this is for testing functionality. You can check to see that chains do or don't get uh, dispatched from your code execution. Dries Vince contributed better database failure handling when running the migrate artisan command when a database has not yet been created, as well as updating the migrate fresh command to streamline the process when a database does not exist. So quoting from the pull request, if the migrate fresh command is called while there isn't any database created yet, currently it'll fail when it tries to wipe the database. So this PR fixes that by first checking if the migrations table exists, and if not, 
immediately going to the migrate command, skipping the DB wipe part of that operation. And this will invoke the migrate command flow and subsequently will reach the point where the command will ask the user to create the database. And in combination with the second PR, this will offer a more seamless experience for people attempting to install Jetstream through the Laravel installer and choosing not to create the database at that time. So thanks to Dries for that one. And lastly, in this release, Dasun Daranga contributed an update to the framework Trim Strings Middleware, where invisible characters were not trimmed during a HTTP request, which can cause issues when submitting forms. We have links to all of those changes and additions in the show notes. That's uh, the the database creation white handling thing is pretty cool. I actually had a I migrated over to Herd for everything. Mm -hmm. Uninstalled DB Engine, uninstalled Nginx, uninstalled all the brew versions of PHP that I had, uninstalled Mailhog, Minio, everything. All the different services I was using and just went all in on Herd. But while doing that, because I had to wipe out DB Engine, I also wiped out all my previous databases right? that were used for my development stuff. And so uh, we're going through a bunch of apps and doing Laravel shifts, right? So even the ones that I haven't touched in a long time, I'm having to to test locally, Mm -hmm. uh, pull a database in it. So when I migrate fresh, it'll say, Oh, hey, by the way, you don't have a database there. Do you want to create it? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. That's pretty awesome, actually. And so that's really, really nice. Just quality of life improvement. I love that little stuff. Just little paper cut fixes just makes the developer experience so good. You know, to to the majority of people, you go, ah, that's right. I forgot to do it. I'll just go and create this database. But Team Laravel always thinking of of us so that we don't have to worry about that stuff. I know. Just just on the migration from DB Engine to Herd, if you're using Herd Pro and and the managed services aspect of it mm-hmm. if you were to open db engine you can right click on the database and go to like the data folder you can copy paste that mm. and do the same oh, thing in, yeah. in the herd and basically just pick up all of your existing databases and throw them into the herd data stuff and everything works so long as you're working in no compatible versions way of are you serious yeah oh, i i said that to myself no. i'm like i have lots and lots of sites and before i do this i need to know that it's possible and yeah it's it's just my school handles it herd allows you to open the the data location and all i did was copy all of the my school data files from db engines location into herd's location and it all worked seamlessly started up and all of my databases That's were there. Awesome. everything was functioning so it's a tip for, for those of you playing at home who have been holding out on maybe doing that migration that as long as you're moving from you know MySQL eight to MySQL eight, MySQL five seven to five seven. Although I don't think it supports five seven, so as long as you're going from MySQL eight to MySQL eight, you should have no problems doing that. Good stuff. Yeah, it's it's been good. the The migration over to Herd Pro has definitely been helpful. Okay, let's talk about Laravel Pint here. So Laravel Pint is a hmm, it's part of the Laravel ecosystem, right? So you think of like Style CI or uh, Titan had Fixer. that like one. Yeah, PHP CS Fixer. That's the idea, right? That's what it is. Is It's supposed to help keep your code nice and clean and to a uh, the Laravel standard way of doing things. Right. So with this week's 1.15 release of Laravel Pint, a new bail flag was introduced. So the bail flag stops Laravel Pint execution on the first failure, similar to Pest. So Pest, you can also pass that bail flag and it'll stop on the very first error. Does the same thing now with Pint. So you may may or may not have known this little piece of trivia. I believe Nuno Maduro is the creator of both of those things, Pint as well as uh, Pest. And so uh, Nuno Maduro actually contributed this uh, as well in pull request 261. So it's exciting to see these, you know, if Pint isn't like dead, it's still getting these continuous yeah. improvements. Um, and it's, it's I love it. I, I haven't actually switched over to it um in anything we just have our we're using style ci still Mm -hmm. it's already integrated into our github stuff and it's Mm -hmm. just it's working so not changing it over but if style ci ever ever, uh dies or something like that uh it's nice to have another have another option yeah the bail is nice there we go especially for those of us that are using client inside of ci because it means that you don't have Mm -hmm. to wait for the entire thing to finish running to see that you've got a if you've got one failure you may or may not have more but you don't want you know right. a failure right at the start and for that process to keep running, keep adding to your billable time. Exactly. You have actions as well. So nice, nice to have that. And, and, at, and at that point, you can just kind of go back and be like, oh, locally, yeah. I'll run that real run quick. Locally, you can run yeah. the whole thing locally. Sure. All right. Into the news. First up, a article from Eric Barnes talking about event sourcing in Laravel with the verbs package. So for those of you who don't know, who aren't familiar, verbs is an event sourcing package for Laravel created by the team at thunk.dev and aims to take all the good things about event sourcing and removing as much boilerplate and jargon 
as possible. Verbs allows you to derive the state of your application from the events that have occurred. So you can learn about the history of verbs uh, in a video that we've got here. Daniel Colborn on his way back to his home from Laracon, India, stopped in. He had a layover in Charlotte and he caught up with Eric Barnes and sat down and did a face-to-face podcast interview. So check that one out. Uh, But verbs is great if you're working with applications that need to be auditable, whose schema may change over time with any complex business logic. Um, Great application of uh, event sourcing there. And instead of knowing just the current state of your application, event sourcing allows you to basically know every change that leads to the current state and stores it in the database or in your persistence. And this allows for a more granular understanding of how the system arrived at its current state and offers the flexibility to reconstruct or analyze that state at any point in time. So if you want to learn more about verbs, you can visit the documentation. We'll have links to that in show notes, as well as a link to the video interview between Eric and Daniel. Check it out. Indeed. And and this is something we actually explored on North Meet South Web podcast last week as well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be using verbs uh, in a recent Greenfield project, Greenfield project that we're going to be taking on. So uh, we'll try and document that journey using verbs, event sourcing, uh, a little bit more on that show as well, if that's something you're interested in hearing about. Okay, we have got Jeffrey Way writing his very first article ever on Laravel News. How is this possible? I guess he's been too busy cranking out content for... uh, Laracast. But mm-hmm. this is the first time, Jeffrey, we're so honored to have you uh, on the blog and be able to talk about you on the podcast here. So um, if anybody doesn't know who Jeffrey Way is, Jeffrey Way uh, taught me jQuery way back in the day, way, way back in the day when he was at NetTuts. Mm-hmm. And he was an awesome teacher then and then launched out on his own when Laravel was like in version three, I think, and started Laracast, went out on his own and did the Laracast thing and has since obviously become a global phenomenon, just an incredible teacher and um, puts out some great content. And so in this article, we're talking about Jeffrey's editor setup in 2024 and specifically his PHP Storm setup in 2024. And in the article here, he talks about how, you know, when he was in his 20s, literally every new editor that came out on the market, he was first in line to try it out, yeah. right? And so he's like, you know, call it age if you want. I call it contentment. I've settled. Like PHP Storm won the IDE war years ago. And let me just tell you how I set it up. So in that spirit, he walks through his general setup and workflow with you, uh, as well as um, a lot of different buttons that he prefers to hide um, and kind of the minimal approach that he takes when he approaches an IDE. Um, this is one other tip that I think he talks about here, but I have really benefited from, which is hiding tabs, hiding all the tabs, which is really jarring at first. If you're used to working with tabs, um, like having multiple tabs open across the top of your editor and you get away from it, it actually is scary at first, but it feels really good after that. And so Jeffrey uh, turned me on to that a long time ago, long, long time ago, and I've been doing it since, um, but that's a weird one. Okay, let me let me skip through or skim through a couple of these here. First thing he talks about is color themes. So he's now using the default color theme, right? Just <laughs> don't mess with it. Just use the default color theme. I haven't gotten quite there yet, but his his... Uh, thought process is that each of these other color themes seems to miss some little piece of um, the yeah, some keyword experience that it's supposed something. to be. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. the editor's default themes have been battle tested every single possible configuration. And so um, that's it. He also sticks with the default font, JetBrains Mono. Um, and then he talks about uh, how he sets up file traversal as far as the search anywhere, uh, line numbers, tab placement, and things like that, um, how he does that. Then he talks about plugins. And so he does idea vim, which gives you effectively like a vim engine. So you can do um, movement throughout your editor using the things that you're used to in vim. Uh, if you want custom UIs and themes, you can install material theme, Nord or carbon plugins. Uh, but one of the big secret weapon plugins that everybody should be using is Laravel idea. Now Laravel idea is not built by i don't think i don't think it's built by the jet brains folks it does come with a tiny price tag it's like five bucks a month totally worth it so jeffrey goes through a couple of the different things that it gives you like code generation automatic validation rules um refactoring a lot of really really cool things that uh 
that Laravel idea provides for you. Um, and then of course, uh, all the different artisan commands that you can run uh, directly without having to get into your console, which is pretty cool. Um, jumping down a little bit more, one of the things that he really likes uh, about having a dedicated IDE as well is the ability to do refactors really easily. There's a whole um, workflow built out for doing refactors. So instead of having to use Sublime or VS Code or something like that, where you have to do some find and replace across your entire project, you can just, in my case, it's Command T, I believe, that opens the refactor. And then I just rename, rename it, and it goes all across your entire project to rename everything, which gives you a lot of freedom when you're, especially when you're just starting to uh, like spike something out. You just kind of name it whatever you want. You don't have to fuss with it too much because you know once you're done with it and you're kind of looking over your PR and GitHub, you can be like, yeah, I don't really like the name of that. I'm going to go change it. Yeah. And then you can go change it. It's no big deal. It doesn't, doesn't take any time at all. Um, Another couple of things, integrated terminal, which is nice. You don't have to leave PHP Storm. Command zero for me opens up my terminal. Uh, seamless testing. You're inside a test. You press Control Shift R. It's going to run the test to give you the results right there in your editor right at the bottom. Uh, it's got debugging right in there too with xdebug. If you happen to be using herd, you just pop open the command five is debug. Uh, open up that little bar at the bottom. Auto formatting. It will automatically clean up your formatting. If you think of like prettier, things like that. It's a uh, command alt L, I think we'll do a auto format across everything uh, and just clean up a controller while you're in there or, you know, whatever you have, it'll just automatically align everything to whatever standard you have set up. And uh, you don't even have to run pint to do that. You just go ahead and push the button and there it goes. A lot of good stuff in here. Of course, uh, it wouldn't be complete if Jeffrey didn't have a video course to talk about it as well. So he does have one. Uh, it's 2.5 hours long. It'll show you everything that you need to know, how to set it up. Uh, so this is more of a, hey, let me skim over and talk to you about it. But if you want to set it up just like Jeffrey has, you can go get that free PHP Storm course. This is not a sponsored thing. Mm -hmm. It's free because Jeffrey's awesome. So you should definitely check it out. Jeffrey, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for all of the amazing tips and tricks over the years. I would definitely not be the developer I am today without all the assistance that you've given me. So big shout out to Jeffrey Way. Thank you. For sure. Yeah, I, I saw this. He, the, he was talking about CSRF. He's got a video out as part of his, you know, what is Laravel or, or, or Laravel from scratch series, or whatever it is. We'll link it in the show notes. But I watched this thing and it's incredible to me that after, you know, him teaching for 15, 20 years, that he still has the passion for it, but he still has the ability to get himself into a frame of mind where he can teach beginners in a friendly and approachable manner. And I think that, you know, is testament to his ex extreme ability as a teacher so hats off to you jeffrey we love everything that you do have done and will continue to do for the, the laravel community um on on the debugging aspect of uh of php storm it's nice to have that built into your editor you're going to editor you're going to catch a lot of things but you're only really going to catch the things that you're that you're working on and where something like Sentry comes in is it helps you to identify debug and resolve your errors when they happen in production it will help you prioritize what errors matter you can sort things by the number of events the number of users are impacted because you know that there's going to be one that's going to have thousands of errors because it's in a constantly executed code path and you've got these things that just crop up every now and then it'll help you find the root cause of an issue getting all of the context you need it'll tell you the environment the device the operating system even the very commit that introduced the error down to the broken line of code and even potentially who introduced it and you can automate everything it'll keep your entire team informed with custom alerts in slack there's two-way sync for issues with jira and tracking releases in github or for cell or netlify there's a whole host of other features including performance monitoring session replay code coverage and more it works of course for php and laravel but in other things next.js react python javascript swift go the list is endless check them out at century.io use the coupon code laravel news for two months free. Thank you, Sentry. That was probably the best sponsor read I've ever heard. So <laughs> I, I was going to add something. I don't know if I want to. The only thing I will say is when you said and more, the one thing I was hoping you'd mention with the and more is cron monitoring. So if you've got any scheduled jobs like we talked about at the top of the show, that bootstrap slash app.php with console or mm -hmm. with schedule, 
it will monitor those for you to make sure that they don't stop running in the middle of the day. Uh, I've been debugging something like that today. And I was like, you know what? We need to get this cron thing onto, onto Sentry. It's all one stop, right? It's a single yeah. pane of glass. So uh, really nice to have that in there. Very cool. Incredible. Okay. Well, let's talk about packages, shall we? So fast server-side code highlighting with Tempest. So the Tempest Highlight Package by Brent Rose released version 1.0 yesterday. And this is a fast, uh, extensible server-side code highlighting for HTML and terminal in PHP. So a lot of the times, this is like a front-end thing, right? It gets shipped to the front-end. Right and it gets highlighted there, you actually can do this directly in your code, right? So you have this new highlighter uh, class that gets imported. Then you can just define what theme you're going to use. You can have light terminal theme, dark terminal theme, whatever you want. And then uh, with the code given, you can just spit it out. Highlighter, parse, you pass in the code, you pass in the type of language that you're using, and it'll spit it out for you given the syntax highlighting that you requested. Um, and so it looks really nice. The built-in theme is for a light terminal. And, and by the way, I should, I should specify here. This is pushing out to the terminal, right? It's not pushing out to the front end, as far as I can tell. Um, That's highlighting for sure. HTML and terminal does both. Let me see here. Yeah, for HTML yeah I think the, the wild yeah, no, no, no. thing You're right. is that you get code the example is the terminal, the terminal one. one. But yeah, yeah, it does. This is yes. like you can replace, you know, uh, the, the JavaScript based tools that, that you might have used in mm -hmm. the past yep, and, yep. and things like that, or third party services that do it. There's uh, the, the thing that is like package eyes that you can use. Uh, I know there's a, the Sparsi package uses this thing that runs on the, on the, on the server and does all the highlighting for you. Um, Aaron Francis has got a tool out there as well, which is mm -hmm. used on yep. all of the Laravel docs. So uh, we'll have links to all of that in the show notes. But if you want to run all this stuff for, for, for yourself, uh, this is a, Pretty nifty little package that that Brent has put together. I'm sure a lot of work went into it. It has a lot of uh, yeah, it has a lot of support for different languages and and things like Blade as well, mm -hmm. right? So Blade's not necessarily like a, um, it's not like HTML or CSS or PHP. It's, no. it's Laravel specific, yeah, it's, but it's got support for Blade, yeah, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so you can even add your own languages or extend them. It's it's got a common mark integration which you can use to highlight code blocks and inline code things like that. So. Yep. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, thanks, Paul Rudner, for writing this one. Thanks, uh, Brent, for creating this one. Brent Rose. Laravel Stub is a package that aims to enhance your development workflow in Laravel by providing a set of customizable stubs. You can use the project's Laravel Stub facade to manage stubs with the following API. So if you import Laravel Stub, you can say Laravel Stub from, give it a path to a stub, tell it where to go to, arrow name, arrow X for extension, arrow replaces, arrow generate. So this allows you to take something with some placeholder strings, for example, namespace, open brace, open brace, caps, namespace. So it does string replacement for you. It allows you to kind of construct your templates however you want to for your Laravel application uh, code, anything that uses the, the generators, and then deals with how to do the replacement for you. Another interesting idea in the package is the download method, which you can use to force a download in a controller if you want to provide stubs for your application. So the package could be an efficient way to provide stub files in your package or application that you want to allow other developers to override with their own customizations. Uh, if you want to get started with the package, we will have links to Laravel stub in the show notes. Very cool. This next one is pretty awesome as well. I think you guys might be doing this at work, but you're probably not using this tool to do it. Uh, I wish this, this next existed tool allows we were you doing to... it. <laughs> oh boy, right? Wouldn't that have saved you so much time? It certainly would. Have. Uh, the title here is creating preview deployments. So that's when you're in GitHub, when you're in your different, you know, uh, I guess GitLabs is the other one. Is that what it is? GitLab. What was yep. the other one? Yeah, you, GitLab, you GitHub, yep, Git Bucket, all of those things. Yep. Bitbucket. Is Bitbucket still around? People do, do yeah. people still use that? Yeah. Yeah. Whether or not people okay. use well, it, I don't know, case. but it's still around. Yeah, right. Yeah, yep. And so in each of those different uh, environments, you might have this ability to be able to see a preview of something that you're working on um, when a pull request is made. Now, I've never had that ability on a Laravel app, but on some different things, like if I have a Nuxt app or something sure. like that, yeah. it'll build it for me and yeah. you know, uh, Astro, something like that. But this allows you to create preview deployments on, you ready for it? Forge. So the first party server provisioning tool, Forge, mm -hmm. right, with Laravel, you can now create preview deployments on Forge with Laravel Harbor. So 
This is a CLI tool that allows you to quickly create on-demand preview environments for your app on Forge. So using the CLI, you can then utilize GitHub Actions to deploy your branches when a pull request is created. And then it will also tear down that deployment from the server when that pull request is merged. Mm -hmm. They have an example workflow in GitHub, uh, sorry, in the post here for how you could use GitHub Actions. This is taken straight from the documentation of Laravel Harbor, which you can find at laravel-harbor.com. Uh, and then once you configure that CLI to run it, uh, any pull request that you make, will get updated with comments to the test environment uh, so that you can see what your preview environment is for a testing feature. So it gives you the URL, the database builder URL. You can access the website by clicking on the link. Um, and it has some really cool features like seamless forge integration, automated environment keys. Uh, it's ready for Laravel and for Nuxt.js. Mm -hmm. It has flexible deployment scripts, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, like inertia it enables server-side rendering for inertia. Um, it can notify Slack and GitHub announcements uh, from post deployment uh, and a lot of other cool stuff. So there are a couple of prerequisites, of course. You're gonna to need to have a Laravel Forge account and then you're gonna to need to have access in your Laravel Forge account to create an API token. So uh, there's a couple of the prerequisites there, but again, you can check it all out at laravel-harbor.com. The source code is also available on GitHub as well if you wanna find that in the show notes. And it's free. This isn't a sponsor yeah. read, guys. This is crazy. I can't believe this stuff exists and people aren't. It's just like out of the goodness of their heart. Hey, here's how we do it. You should do it this yeah. way too. Really, really cool stuff. Yeah, this is awesome. Kudos to Maran and the team that have put this together. We we ended up abandoning the approach that I had built out using Ryan Chandler's Forge Previewer. Uh, somewhere in my uh, annoyance of doing this stuff by hand, I, I reached out to James <laughs> Brooks and said, hey, can we just have this as a feature as part of Forge? It's amazing that this, of course, popped up now but we there you go um we ended up doing all of this stuff in kubernetes uh, and deploying with docker and things okay. like that so i we had a new guy start and handballed that project to him and and that's that's how we're doing it now but this this is great <laughs> if you if you want to do this kind of stuff so i would i would definitely want to recommend you check this one out the pdf optimizer package for php and laravel applications is for effortless optimization and compression of pdf files PDF Optimizer utilizes GhostScript to significantly reduce PDF file sizes. And the PDF Optimizer package can be used in any PHP project whilst also offering a Laravel-specific API that streamlines working with PDF file optimization. So if you've ever generated a PDF from some tool, it can get pretty big if you're not careful. So having something to, you know, even if it's part of the workflow, generate it however you normally would mm -hmm. then put it through this thing, which has the, the Laravel integration. You can say PDF optimizer, colon, colon, from disk, open, file name, to disk, put on S3, um, settings, so you can tell it, you know, is it a screen PDF or is it a print PDF, any color conversion strategies, color image resolution, and then say optimize, and then the output file name, and it will do all of that for you. So some of the key features of the package is that it offers fluid, fluent method chaining. It's got logger support, customization to tailor the optimization process for your exact needs. The Laravel integration, of course, which is why we're talking about it, and queue support. So you can dispatch all of this stuff to the background and have it handled uh, without interrupting your user's flow. So definitely check that one out if you ever find yourself needing to crunch in a, in a nice way without you know getting too many artifacts and, and damaging your pdf i suppose indeed yes 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 good stuff um we have a piece of software that does some of the optimization for us but it's getting old and crusty and the guy who is uh, supposed to be maintaining it the guy that we bought it from he's like retiring soon and i'm no, pretty yeah. sure he just stopped answering emails so it's like <laughs> you know maybe someday we'll start using this and just take it on on our own yeah um, we've got one more package here to talk about, and this is called Bartender. Not to be confused with the amazing Mac app, Bartender, which hides all those icons in the top right corner of your screen, which I also use and love. Uh, but this is an opinionated way to authenticate users using Laravel Socialite. So if you have not used Socialite before, it is a Laravel... Mm, it's like a it's like a different single way to handle authentication yeah. like OAuth, OAuth providers. providers yeah. yeah single side on yeah right and this, so it supports like facebook twitter linkedin google github etc 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 down the line right so these OAuth providers it provides a way to be able to connect with those and then there's a bunch of different drivers um that are available through i don't remember what the name of the site is but if you go to the documentation it has socialproviders.com right? i think it is we'll have a link to the show notes that's right that sounds right yeah that sounds right 
But once you have that provider, you're sort of left a little bit to yourself to decide how exactly you want to implement it inside of your Laravel code base. Um, they, I think they have some tutorials and like some suggestions, but there's nothing that gives you like an out of the box, like, hey, here's how you use Socialite and just put, mm -hmm. it, put it into your app. So Bartender is basically meant to fill that space. So it gives you a controller, routes, a default implementation for handling that authentication with these different providers. Uh, but everything can be, almost everything in Bartender can be customized. So um, using these different configuration conventions that they've set up, you can enable logins by defining these different routes and then configuring the providers that your app will support. So there's a different, like when these OAuth providers redirect back, they have to have a place to redirect back to. So unless you want to create a different controller for every single one of those, what you can do is you can just create this bartender routes and then set up the uh, different providers inside of this config. And so once the config is set up, then you don't have to create the controllers. It just handles the redirect stuff for you. So it takes care of everything from there. Uh, however, you can also extend and customize everything from OAuth redirects and callbacks, user creation and handling, and user direct redirects and flash messaging. So uh, if you're using OAuth, which I, or sorry, not OAuth, if you're using Socialite, which I have used before, uh, you should definitely check this one out. You can learn more about this package, get full installation instructions, et cetera, et cetera. All the things we always say at the end of these uh, by looking at the show notes. I will mm -hmm. say also that typically when you're setting up um, these sort of providers, these sort of social logins, you don't typically just do one, right? Yeah. It's typically like you do three Multiple. or four yeah. or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And so it does get a bit uh, onerous to create and maintain all those different connectors. And it's, and so and it's often a like single... copy pasting the same thing if you're not. It is. So yes. yeah, having, having yep. it just done for you in an opinionated way. So you don't, because it's not, OAuth authentication is not really a part of your application. So having someone else's opinions and just and just running with them is generally a, a good way of doing it. You know, having something conventional that you kind of just follow along and then it's just there and you don't have to think about it is is a good approach for this kind of stuff. You got it. You got it. Nailed it. Awesome. All okay. right. Last two. Two tutorials here. Uh, both of them written by everyone's favorite human. Paul Redmond. The first one is talking about generating code coverage in Laravel using PCub. So most people, I think, would would be fairly familiar that Xdebug does do uh, code coverage as well as debugging for your applications. It is a bit heavy, I find, in terms of um, code coverage. So if you're wanting to do PHP artisan test with code coverage, if you're using test and you want to do code coverage, if you want to use PHP unit and do code coverage, there's usually two or three different ways of doing it. Xdebug you might already have installed, but it can slow down your test suite when you run it. So it's generally not advised to use Xdebug on your test suite. PCOV is specifically for code coverage. And so you might use PCOV just to do the coverage reports for your applications. And this tutorial talks about how to set it up, how to install it, how to get it working on uh, a Mac environment and talks about building HTML reports um, configuring it in PHP unit and and figuring out what it's doing coverage with. So you can say it needs to coverage the app folder, it needs to cover the source folder and things like that. And it allows you to specify non-standard code paths as well. Gives you lots of different output formats, not PCOV itself, but PHP unit pest under uh, on top of that, that you can send these things to tools like Sentry, for example, which, which do handle uh, code coverage analysis and things like that. So wonderful tutorial there from Paul. Check it out. And the second one, is a tutorial written by Paul with a video covering uh, the covering the tutorial itself uh, by Eric Barnes, and this talks about creating your own PHP helpers in a Laravel project. So it talks about creating a helpers file, where you might consider putting that, uh, how you would auto load that, whether you do it through Composer JSON's auto load, or if you do it as just requiring it in your uh, you know, Bootstrap file or whatever and where you would define functions, how you'd use them and things like that. And so, yeah, we can link to that in the show notes as well. But that is all that we have for this week. That's it, everyone. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. This was episode 212. You can find show notes for this episode at podcast.laravel-news.com slash 212. Reach out to us on Twitter at Jacob Bennett, at Michael Dorinda, at Laravel News. And uh, if you like the show, please rate it up in your podcatcher of choice. Five stars would be amazing. We would really, really appreciate it. Folks, until next time, we'll see you later. Bye, everyone.